I was I was out running at one point this week. And I was try, kind of trying to put a number in it in my head. I was like, yeah, I'm probably like 98%. Welcome to Training for Ultra, the podcast. Welcome to the third episode of the Training for Ultra podcast. My name's Rob. I also go by Training for Ultra. And I'm really excited today to have Zach Miller, elite ultra runner on. Um, he actually lives at Bar Camp, which is up um, a good ways up Pike's Peak. Um, but before we get into that, I do want to announce that the podcast has two new sponsors. So Hammer Nutrition, who's backed me from just about day one has gotten involved and wants to be an official sponsor. So I'm really happy to have them on. Um, they'll allow us to do some free giveaways of their products. So look forward to doing that down the road. And then also Sufferfest Beer is an official sponsor now. So it's hard to turn down a beer sponsorship. So I'm really excited to have them on board. Um, We'll be teaming up for a lot of different things. Um, They're actually going to be in Colorado here pretty soon. I'm going on a group run at the Boulder Running Company. I think it's this Tuesday. But they're based out of California, and I'm a huge IPA fan, and they make a IPA named Taper, which I am going to be doing a lot of tapering here soon. (laughs) And today, though, I... Zach Miller and I have been going back and forth on do we do a phone interview should we go out for lunch um, in person and instead of doing a phone interview I I thought it'd just be fun to build this podcast interview into my training plan so today around nine o'clock I I went to the bar trail trailhead um, in Colorado Springs and did a did a kind of a long run for me so it built perfectly into my training plan because I do have run rabbit run coming up here shortly Um, but it was 3,000 feet of gain to get to bar camp where Zach is so it was about six miles it took me I think just under two hours to to get all the way up there and so we did the interview and then I got to do another six miles down which went a lot faster um but it was it was definitely a good time i walked up to to bar camp and uh first thing i saw was was zach carrying two enormous logs on each shoulder just walking by um they're probably like 40 pound logs on each on each shoulder um so he's definitely doing some cross training that's for sure but I hope you guys liked the interview. We talked for about 40 minutes, and my main focus was um, just where his head's at after his his back injury, and in seeing how he's feeling for UTMB. And we hit on a, a bunch of other real interesting topics. So hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks. So I'm sitting here at Bar Camp. I think it's 10,200 feet with Zach Miller. Thank you for joining me on the Training for Ultra podcast. Very nice of you. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was uh, quite the six-mile hike to get up here to do an <laughs> interview, but well worth it. Yeah, it takes a little bit of effort to uh, to find me. <laughs> so starting off the year, you made some big sponsorship announcements. Uh, um, yeah. Who are you with right now? Um, yeah, so it's grown a bit. Um, I am... Um, I'm... S- I'm still with Nathan um, for all my packs and water bottles and just basically hydration gear in general. Um, And that's been a really great partnership. So happy to continue that one. Um, And then I've officially added Goo as my nutrition sponsor. So basically all my electrolyte drinks, recovery uh, drinks and... um, just other recovery products um and then race day fueling uh you know waffles gels all that type of stuff um 
is supported by Goo, um, and real happy about that. Uh, really great company to work with. Um, I was using their products for uh, several years before we made it an official sponsorship, uh, but really happy to be official. Uh, and then I've also added Buff this year. Um, that's a brand new sponsor. Uh, haven't really worked with them in the past, but really happy about that one as well. Um, we use their arm sleeves and um, not arm sleeves um, because it it um, is that would be like a shared category with other sponsors. Um, so not arm sleeves, but uh, headwear. So neck and head, anything neck and head to keep me warm in the winter, keep the sun off me in the summer, um, or just for fun, whatever, you know, all the casual lifestyle headwear, um, and then all the active headwear too, uh, for running, uh, racing and training, um, and just anything really. Um, so that's been really good. Um, it's good to have a good, uh, sponsor to help keep my head and neck really warm in the winter and yeah, especially I guess here. stylish in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, I have switched uh, from Nike to North Face as my title sponsor. Um, so uh, that has been a good partnership so far, and I'm, I'm real happy with the move. Um, the products have been really good. Um, I mean, North Face, I guess, is largely known for puffy jackets and <laughs> tents and sleeping bags and stuff like that um and just and just like hiking gear and 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 running gear like rain jackets and stuff so we've had a crazy monsoon season this year uh and so i'm really happy to be with the north face and have really bomber jackets to keep me uh safe and you know dry and uh know as happy as you can be when you're out there in the middle of a thunderstorm <laughs> yeah uh and then probably my biggest concern going with them was uh the footwear but i took a careful look at that before i made my final decisions um i had offers from a lot of different companies um you know a, a lot of different footwear companies and so i took a real careful look at the footwear with north face before i made my decision um and i would I felt good that they could um, meet my needs and do a good job with footwear. Um, and so I've jumped in and I've, I've been quite pleased. Um, the new shoes that have just come out, some of them, and the new shoes that they're working on for, you know, the next year or two. Um, I'm, I'm sample size, so I've been testing a bunch of stuff for them. Um, and I'm pretty happy with, with what I see. Um, it's, I think, definitely um, moving moving along nicely and uh i think the shoes are getting better and better and um i've been training in them all summer and and uh it's been it's been going well cool yeah last time we talked i saw you out in the north face shoes and it yeah took, I, it took everything out of me not to say anything <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, run, the announcement. I run a lot in the enduris uh which is the shoe they designed with dylan bowman um it's it's I would say if you categorize their shoes, it's their higher cushioning shoe. It's it's like their all day shoe. Um, that's the shoe I can take out in the mountains and just go all day long, and it feels good. Like my feet don't hurt. You know, it it climbs, it descends, it it feels smooth on you know runnable terrain. Yeah, you can transition to the road. Um, that's kind of my my go to shoe. Um, and then I have also been running uh, a whole. A bunch in a new prototype shoe that they're working on um and I, I i don't think it i don't think it comes out till maybe next year um but i've been pretty pleased with that shoe too and um you know kind of trying to work with them on making some suggestions and stuff before it you know you know as they develop it and you make it even better but i've i've put some good miles in on that shoe and uh that shoe's a lot of fun to run in it's a little more in the category of maybe like the the Nike Kyger, um, a little like lighter, racier feel shoe. Nice. Uh, well, switching gears, you have a huge race coming up. I was interested to hear a little bit more about, you know, your decision between Hard Rock and UTMB and, you know, the ensuing, it was a back injury. Is that correct? Yeah, it was, uh, it started forever ago. Um, 
it was basically late winter, early spring, um, kind of right in the middle of snowshoe racing season. I was uh, training out in the mountain, and I just I wasn't on snowshoes. I I uh, was just running down the trail, um, and it was like one of those days where you would only need traction for maybe like the first half mile. And then once you get a half mile down, there's like no more ice. <laughs> and I mean, I don't typically have extra traction on anyways, but I just hit a patch of ice wrong and slipped and I didn't fall, but I twisted my back and uh, it just really messed it up on the left side. Um, I tried to run through it for a while and then it just kind of got worse and worse and I wasn't really making any progress. So I just kind of had to pull the plug and take like five weeks off from running and I I rarely ever take a day off from running, uh, so fi five weeks, uh, it, it's nothing uh, really in the big picture, um, but you know, for someone who runs pretty much every day, it, it felt like a long time and it, it, was, was, it was it tough it was mentally? Tough. Yeah, it was tough mentally because I just didn't, I just didn't feel right. Like, um, I mean, that's how I stay in shape. Um, that's kind of what structures my day and makes me feel productive. and. So when I didn't go out and run, it just like, it just didn't feel right. Um, like I like didn't know if I was supposed to eat. Like, <laughs> I mean, I knew I was supposed to eat, but it was like, I'm not tr really training. I'm not really doing anything. So you'd eat breakfast and then, you know, a few hours later you'd be like, well, I haven't done anything. Am I supposed to eat lunch? <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, and you are, but, <laughs> uh, so it was just kind of weird. Um, and yeah, it was tough, but, uh, I started, doing like a whole lot of push-ups and like core work and like um uh, like light wall sits and stuff like that trying to keep myself sane um and then and then it was also tricky because living at bar camp it's not like i can just go to the local especially that time of year when there's still snow and stuff it's not like i can just go to the local y and swim laps or aqua jog or uh even like mountain biking you know maybe if i had a fat tire bike or maybe if i was just had a proper mountain bike or was better at mountain biking um there'd be a few more options but even with the back it was still kind of sensitive so you don't want to overdo it and the train up here you know it's not like you have a it's not like i have a nice flat city block that i can just go cruise on a on a bike um it's you know it, it, it'd be riding trails basically so um, so that kind of made it challenging too, but it was probably kind of good because it kind of made me sit still a little bit. Um, but yeah, and then that just kind of kept, after about five, six weeks, it finally started to make really good progress. I started to get back to training, but then I was in crunch time for hard rock. So I just kind of played it by ear for a long time to see if the fitness and the back, if, see if the back would come around and the fitness would come around. Um, but like a few weeks out from Hard Rock, I did my service requirement. Like I was getting everything in order in case I wanted to run. But like a few weeks out, it was still bugging me. And I just finally, I, I talked to my dad on the phone and I he doesn't necessarily make a ton of suggestions or voice a ton of opinions uh, about things. But when he does, um, I've learned that it's, it's probably good to pay attention because <laughs> he kind of like yeah. speaks selectively. And he just kind of, kind of voiced that he, you know, he wasn't going to tell me what to do or anything, but he didn't think it really like made sense. Like it would be the best decision to have my, you know, to, to come back from that and go straight to hard rock, it, you know, in that time frame and everything. Uh, so, so I finally just decided to just, you know, not do hard rock and just wait for UTMB. Um, and I think that was a good choice. Uh, now I'm going into UTMB. Um, the the le the initial injury, uh, I feel really good about the left side of my back. My, I did have some. I'd hope so. I, I just saw you carrying two <laughs> 40 pound logs on each shoulder when I walked up yeah. here to bark. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to do some work around camp, fix up a few things. Um, so do you think you're back to where you you were prior to the injury? Uh, fitness wise, I, th I think, um, yeah, pretty much back there, even better. Uh, um, the, I ha I did have the right side of my back and well act up some, it was kind of my, but it was different. It was kind of like my back and my hip flexor and my groin. And I've had like hip flexor and groin problems before and they usually clear up. Um, so it flared up a bit. Uh, the low back was involved, but I, um, 
saw um, uh, uh, a good friend, uh, Ann Lebowski, who's a physical therapist, and she basically just thought it was muscular and that it was probably related to a lot of like tight, like a tight psoas muscle and everything. So I've been stretching um, and working on that and it's been making a lot of progress. I'm feeling way better about it. Like my, my run, my runs are good. I'm hitting hard training. You know, I can go out and I can do long stuff and I can climb and I can descend. Um, I wouldn't say that's exciting. Yeah. I wouldn't say like that today I'm like absolutely a hundred percent, but, um, it's made so much progress in the past like two weeks that I feel, I feel really good about it. Like I was, I was out running at one point this week and I was kind of trying to put a number in it in my head. I was like, yeah, I'm probably like 98%. Uh, and, and I still have like another week of hard training and then two weeks of taper. So I'm feeling good about it. Um, and, and when I think back, like you always want to be like perfect going into race, but the number of races that I've gone into where like everything wasn't perfect, like you rarely have that race where like, there's just nothing. Like yeah. I've had races that have gone really well and going into them, like a knee hurt or mm-hmm. I was a little sick or, um, you know, th- there was some sort of niggle. Um, yeah. and I think almost everybody, uh, has that a lot of the time. I had so. a niggle just coming up to bar camp yeah, today yeah yeah so <laughs> for the interview let's talk yeah. about utmb um what's what's do you have a game plan kind of walk me through whatever you're willing to share because i know mm-hmm. it's gonna be super competitive yeah who intimidates you if anybody like who are mm-hmm. you watching um i know i i just saw jason schlarb at hard rock mm-hmm. um i happened to be right at the uh aid station where he had to drop mm-hmm he, he looks like he's in amazing shape. Yeah. Killian, that was pretty crazy how he f- not only finished but won that. Um, but what's your mind frame going into UTMB and kind of what are you thinking here? Yeah, I think if you'd asked me like a month ago or maybe even like two weeks ago, um, I felt a lot more pressure. I was a lot, I was more, well, I was more stressed. I was more like, you know, it just just feeling the pressure and and dealing with all the injuries this year that's just made a lot more stressful um and then and then the field yeah it's just it's it's so competitive i mean how you know how do you beat a guy who summits everest twice in five days or whatever without oxygen you know and then wins hard rock with one arm basically um you know achillian is just on such a high level um it's you know guys like that are just you know it can seem intimidating you know um and there's just and the list doesn't stop there i mean there's killian and the and there's um the european field is just so strong there's xavier uh there's francois de hain um there's uh probably a whole bunch of other guys um but i think between those three alone they have like i think between them they have like I think like seven UTMB wins between those three guys. Um, so they've all won the race multiple times. And I mean, that says something like sometimes you win a race once, but, and that's, that's incredible. But like then for someone to repeat it or, you know, do it twice or do it three times like Killian has, that really says something. Um, and then you throw the Americans in, like Tim Tullifson's looking really good. Yes. Um, I'm hoping he has a great race, like Tim and I are buddies, and um, I hope Speak he has out. a great looks, race. Yeah, really good. Yeah, um, and he's real smart. Uh, David Laney hasn't raced very much this year. Um, I know he. we both had. We were both injured at the same time, um, and so he's, you know, he doesn't have any 100 milers that I know of under his belt this year, like he has in past years when he's gone and run really well. Um, uh, and then, you know, you've got, you've got Jim, um, what are your thoughts on Jim going into UTMB? Yeah. I mean, I think He's Jim's probably going to go out pretty, he, pretty quick, right? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've heard people say he, that he says he's going to chill, um, that he's going to sit back or maybe not sit back, but you know, like maybe, I don't know, maybe that probably means like sit with the pack or sit with whoever's leading. I don't know. But I mean, I don't know. I, I. I also know people ask me how I'll race and I don't really, you know, necessarily really know until the gun goes off, you know? Um, so I think Jim's uh, super fit, super, str- well, I don't 
can't really say for sure. I, yeah, I mean, but based on like other stuff he's done this year and Speed Goat and all that, looks like he's fit and strong and he's really, really good. Um, so it'll. I think I think he could potentially nail it. Um, but you know, a hundred miles is like a really tough thing to predict for anybody. Even a guy like Killian, you can go out and just not have a good day. Um, so I think like when the gun goes off on Friday night, like it's going to be, you know, anybody's game. Like there's, there's a few that, you know, you expect to see up at the front more than others. But like I just, I said to somebody earlier this year, like probably some nobody that nobody knows is going to win it because all the rest of us are all just going to kill each other up front and <laughs> there's going to be nothing <laughs> left. Um, so, you know, and that nobody will be like some really good runner. It'll just be just, won't, won't be <laughs> like it won't be the person people expected um i i don't know that they'll necessarily be the case but that's kind of how i joke around about it so walk me through uh kind of your game plan like pre-race meal and and how are you going to deal with that early or that really late start uh-huh um and then starting by running in the night which i think is a little backwards for most people and the aid stations too it's not your typical cuisine there yeah, um, I think with, uh, well, well, for one, um, starting at night and everything, I'm just, I'm trying to get over there um, a bit earlier this year. Not super early, I don't like to go like a month earlier, that stuff. I I, I think I'm, I'm planning to get there on the 22nd. Um, I just want to be there basically early enough to get settled in, get some really good sleep, um, and feel rested going in and, and, you know, maybe kind of transition into the time zone. It's mainly the time zone is all I'm concerned about that shift. Cause I know how that is. And on race day, you're going to go for like 24 hours. So you need to be ready to go. Um, so, and so I just kind of want to get well rested so that when it goes off at 6 PM, you know, I feel good. Usually what I do with European races that start at weird times like that is I basically just calculate back from the start and I just do my meals the same as I would for like a morning race. So I just shift things around. So like, you know, the last meal before the race is breakfast and the second to last meal before is dinner. So, you know, in, in the case of UTMB, you know, that, that could mean that, you know, basically breakfast is dinner and lunch is breakfast and then we get on the start line you know mm -hmm. so or early dinner is breakfast or whatever um so that's kind of how i usually try and work it and then probably just have myself so that i can hopefully sleep a bunch the morning of either sleep in really late or sleep in some and then get up and eat and then maybe go back to bed and sleep again and then get up and eat something like that but just be rested and relaxed going into it um and and then yeah and then the other prep is just kind of like mentally trying to stay relaxed stay relaxed and i mean still be pumped and psyched and you know ready to go out there but uh you know kind of keeping it all in perspective and not stressing out too much um and i said earlier that if you asked me like two weeks ago i was probably a lot more stressed and nervous um but i think um in the things that have changed that, I mean, for one, like the stretching and things I've been doing for my back have been helping a lot. So I've seen a lot of improvement, um, with like the kinks I had. Um, so that's given me more confidence, um, and seeing training, you know, seeing good things in training. So that, that helps. And then, and then the other thing is, um, the other weekend when they had Tromso Sky Race and Hillary Allen had her fall, um, it's just kind of like, wiped my slate slate clean and drew a new picture like i was just like it just kind of put things back in perspective it was like absolutely uh, i'm just like like i'm here worried about like utmb and like my little the little muscle niggles in my back and like trying to train and like she just almost died falling off a ridge in norway like uh that just like um that's just like really shook me up like i i knew about it pretty quickly when it happened um but uh like it was just like it was at, like I, I didn't have all the details at first and at first i was kind of like oh it, i wasn't as shaken at first i was just kind of like because i didn't know all the details and then as i found out more i was like 
and it, and people were saying how lucky she was to survive it, and it was just like it kind of hit me more and more. Um, it kind of shook me up for, or it did. It shook me up for a few days, and you know, kind of muddled my mind. And um, but then at the same time, it's just I was just like, all these things that I'm worried about don't even matter anymore. Like, heck, like what her recovery process is going to be, you know, who knows, like months or, you know, maybe I, I don't, I don't know how long it's going to be. It's going to be a, a long time probably. And it makes my injuries look like nothing. And then just the fact that life is that fragile, that we all go out there like, and we train hard and, you know, I do stuff in training that, you know, does have an element of risk. I mean, a lot of days, yeah, it's just some single track trail, but some days I'm scrambling like, ridge lines and stuff and it's like one one misstep and you know those you're winter do you're done like um, those winter summits of pikes peak yeah yeah e every morning <laughs> yeah i mean those uh, a misstep can yeah turn into something really bad or actually a day or two after hilly's accident i was out running on a trail that really isn't that dangerous it's just really steep um it's it's a trail called the heiser trail and it drops down into cascade um, and it was wet. It's been raining a lot. And there was one switchback I usually jump. There's this huge boulder that I usually run on top of instead of like instead of the dirt because um, it's kind of easier that way. And I st it was like a day or two after Hillary's accident. I stepped on that boulder and my foot just slipped a little. And like I caught myself and like I didn't I didn't fall. But like I looked at where I would have went if I would have lost it. And I was like, well, I probably would have slid down that boulder which would hurt and then i probably would have dropped off the other side and probably fell about like 10 feet which i mean is nothing compared to the 30 meters that she fell but um like it probably would have at least done something <laughs> or yeah, at least absolutely shaken me up um and i was just kind of scared i was like whoa like it, that quickly it can happen and then i looked at it <laughs> i was climbing that climb the other day and i looked at it again i was like yeah and there's like some rocks underneath that boulder i was on top of so it's like that could have been really bad um but right. stuff like that can happen all the time and we just kind of take it for granted um so going into utmb now <laughs> i was on the phone with my mom i was like it doesn't i was like it it's like it doesn't even matter anymore like i mean it does but it's just the perspective is different it's like yeah i'm gonna I'm probably going to get nervous. I'm I'm going to be, you know, my competitive nature is still going to be there. I think, you know, I, I'm still going to have certain goals and stuff like that. But I think also in the back of my mind, I'm still going to know that like, you know, in the big picture of life, like this race is pretty small. <laughs> well, and that's, that's part of the reason I look up to you as a runner so much. You're always, you have things well in perspective. I enjoy your articles that you write. Yeah. Um, any any last thoughts on UTMB? Um, I, I yeah, I'm just I'm looking forward to the adventure of it, like like normal. Um, it's super stacked and competitive, and I'm excited about that. I think it's really cool. I hope people have a ton of fun watching it. I hope it turns into, you know, I hope it's a good show for people. Uh, yeah. I have no clue how it's gonna play out. There's so many dynamics. Um. But, you know, I, you know, I just, I hope we can just compete good and strong and um, just kind of give it all we've got and, and, you know, not, not forget like the real reason we're out there and how lucky we are to do it. Yeah. Um, well, normally I'd switch gears into training talk, but mm -hmm. since you were kind enough a few months ago, we did our ultra advice uh, YouTube video. So I'm going to skip over that. Okay. And I do really appreciate your time. I'm just going to okay. throw a few last random questions in here. Sure. I'm um, trying to do that with every interview, um, make it a little more fun and interesting. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess we can start just real briefly. Um, you talked about your shoes, toe socks or no toe socks? Uh, no toe socks. I've never even tried them for running. Never yeah. even tried them? In my mind, that was like a fashion fad in like, <laughs> I don't know, like the t early 2000s. As I sit here in toe socks. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Eo e Wang said she was creeped out by him. I thought it was it's, hilarious. It's totally fine, but like toe socks were just kind of these like funny things that, that, uh, I don't know, like we wore in high school or so. I didn't wear them, but like kids wore in high school or something. Um, <laughs> But then uh, I guess, yeah, I guess is it Injinji that does them? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, some people seem to, 
you know, love them. Uh, I maybe I'd love them if I tried them. I don't know. <laughs> I've just been, I've just been uh, North Face toe socks. <laughs> yeah, no, I just I've been running a lot of Dry Max socks. The, they sent me a bunch of socks to try. And Surprised you don't have your own I've sock been. yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just, I've I've been kind of slow on the on the sock game, but uh, I have a whole, whole bunch of nice dry max socks that they Sweet. sent me to try, and I've just kind of been testing those out for the past couple months. So post race indulgence, where do you go to food or drink? Uh, fit food. Uh, like I mean, for food, like burger and fries, basically. That's like chocolate what I, milkshake what too, I or what? Ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah. 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 Um, but you're, you, yeah, I usually have a pretty savory, you know, savory tooth after a long ultra. So like pizza, burger, fries, stuff like that. Um, drink, I, I don't drink beer. So, um, I usually like to celebrate a good, uh, a good race with like, a a nice root beer. <laughs> so no, el- no alcohol at all. Uh, no, no, okay. no alcohol at all. Cool. Um, I love like chocolate milk and stuff like that but but yeah it's usually like you know root root beer uh ice cream burgers fries pizza (laughs) what's what's your favorite training run like what do you really enjoy the most you have one run where you're like i can't wait for tuesday because oh that's hard um that's hard i did a really good one the other night um I I ran for I I I I ran from like I forget like I think I st- I started like just before I started a little before 7 p.m. I was at the cabin all day and I started a little before like 7 p.m. Partly just because I'm terrible at getting out the door. Um, just I get distracted really easily. <laughs> um, but I think I left a little before seven and I, I got back like just before midnight and I did this big loop that I kind of call the super loop. And the super loop is kind of just like a general loop and there's like all sorts of different ways to do it. But basically I leave bar camp, um, go out the mountain view trail and then they built this, they're building this new trail called the missing link trail. And it takes you over to what we call Jones park. And so I run all the way over to like Jones park and, um, if you're from the springs you'll kind of be able to follow but basically take 667 over to uh the new 667 over to 668 i think there's one other trail in between those two um and anyways just pop down into like bear creek canyon and come back through red rock open space on section 16 and intamin trail and up and over iron mountain um that and then up the bar trail back home and it's just this really big loop a lot of single track really cool trails um it just kind of like does this just it it's just it's just this it takes you through like all these different areas. like people would say oh i run in jones park or i run in red rock open space or oh, i run on bar trail kind of takes all those things and just connects them nice. um so i really like that um and then that's just really enjoyable um, and then I've had kind of a couple go-to routes this year to prep for UTMB um, that are just like really good, um, uh, just really good for fitness um, and strength. So I'll do like a, a crossing of the peak from bar camp. So I'll take bar trail to the summit and then go down the Crags Trail all the way to the Crags Trailhead on the west side of the peak and then come back up and over and back down. It's like a 25 mile route, but it's basically all above I mean, the Crags, the Crags Trailhead is probably the low point, and it's probably like right around ten. It might be like nine eight, nine five. I don't know, but it's basically like twenty five miles above ten thousand feet, um, and I that that's a lot of that's fun. Insane. Um, so that's just like a good, hard, fun day, and it's just basically long climb, long descent, long climb, long descent. Uh, that's like all it is, um, and so that that's really fun. I've been hitting that this summer. Um, I kind of want to do one more version of it before UTMB and maybe do a triple ascent, like maybe up over back and then up one more time and back down to bar camp. Cause it would put it, I think at about 37 miles or 35, 37 miles, about 37 miles. And it would give me three good climbs and three good descents. Um, 
which is which is kind of like the last three climbs of the UTMB course. Um, but I don't know. I'll see. I don't want to do too much too close to the race. So if I'm feeling good, I might go for that. Um, cool. Or I might or I might do a variation of it. Favorite book or magazine? Running, non running. Um. Do you have a favorite? Uh, I I don't read as much as you would think i like a lot of john krakauer stuff though so like in into thin air um just basically anything by m most things i've read by john krakauer are good um i don't read a lot of magazines um i really enjoyed uh unbroken uh the story about louis zamperini uh that was probably one of my my favorite reads um but yeah, I don't do a ton of reading, but that's some of the stuff I've enjoyed. Um, last, last, I guess winter, I read, I read the Shack. It was super popular like years ago, and I never read it. And then I picked it up and read it, and I really enjoyed that book. It's kind of intense, but uh, but it was it was definitely a good read. We got like two more for you here. Uh, wildest animal encounter. Um. Anything crazy? Well yeah uh i mean i'd say i'd say mountain lion but it really wasn't that crazy it was just kind of like oh there's a mountain lion and it ran away <laughs> you know so it was the encounter itself other than the fact that it was a mountain lion that i saw wasn't very crazy well that here um yeah that was here on on the mountain uh away from camp but yeah it was it was here um the the wildest mountain the the wildest one was probably um out in the indian peaks um hillary allen and i ran the uh pawnee buchanan loop um although the gate was closed for the season so we had to start farther out so i think it's usually like a 28 or 30 mile loop and i think we ended up with like 35 miles um because we had to run extra to get in and out um but when we were fin we finished it in the dark in like October, which is like r rutting seat, which is like the rut for the moose. Um, and we we were coming back in the dark with like we didn't really plan to fish in the dark, so we just had like I had like an emergency headlamp with me, just a little one, yeah. and she had like her iPhone. Um, and we ran into this herd of moose, like um, herd of yeah, like it. Uh, I, I saw them and I guess she didn't see them. So like I grabbed her and was like, stop. Uh, and, and, and we stopped and I can you know, you figure oh you just go around them through the trees so they don't charge you. But when we started to do that, then there were more on the other side. And so we were kind of in the middle and it was like just pretty tense. Cause like, I think they surprised us and we probably surprised them. And, we were trying to get through there without getting charged. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, and we did. We got through. Uh, we just kind of threaded the needle uh, carefully, slowly. Speed um, work. And then and then start running like <laughs> as soon as we got back on the trail. Um, but yeah, that one was pretty wild. But it was cool. I'll never forget. I'll never forget that one. <laughs> and then just to finish it up here, um, what inspires you? Is is there an individual? that inspires you what inspires you what drives you because um you know y you seem very disciplined with your training and uh very driven and incredibly mentally tough during mm -hmm. races and, and just what inspires you to get out and run and and train so hard yeah uh that's a good question i mean i do just love the mountains and you know i love running and I love doing big roots and big loops and, um, you know, just getting out there. But, uh, you know, there's also days where it's just like, you know, it feels a little more like, well, you know, I just have to do it. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm tired and uh, it loses some of its magic or whatever, which is sad. It sounds sad, but I think it's just the reality of it um, or it can be. Um so yeah i mean what inspires me um i mean i'm just i think i'm just very naturally driven um it it's just like if if there's something i'm passionate about something that i'm dedicated to like i'm 
gonna want to do it like all the way um so yeah i don't know i i feel like that's kind of hard to pinpoint i mean i think i just like when i was growing up when i was little i just always liked to like do my best um just you know if i was going to do something i was going to try and be the best i could at it um and i think just like i think that really drives me um and so i don't know i don't know necessarily why that is maybe it's because i grew up around parents and grandparents who are all really hard working and i just saw maybe i just saw them striving to do a really good job and maybe that just rubbed off or maybe it's something deeper down i don't know but um you know i just don't like if you can give it your best why you know why would you give it anything less you know and and that and that gets you know applied maybe selectively to certain things in life obviously you know <laughs> don't necessarily go out and kill every aspect of life you know i don't know if anybody can <laughs> can do that um but with running it gets channeled a lot um and then yeah so i mean i think maybe that's a lot of it I, I don't know I, I mean I do think sometimes about like the people back home in Pennsylvania or you know it's like kind of like oh, I got you know like d doing this for them or you know want to you know make the hometown proud or whatever um but it's yeah I think it comes a lot just back to that just that inner drive of like just doing the best I can awesome oh. I, I think that's a good place to uh end the interview i appreciate your time i know everyone listening to this will be rooting for you at utmb so we hope you have the best race possible and stay right. safe out there yeah and thank you again for your time yeah thank you very much and thanks everyone for all the support